What's cooking tonight? Um, I'm going to show people how to fillet a fish, uh, in particular a tilapia, which I've got wrapped in cling film at the moment. I got it frozen from the Asian supermarket and I've never tried it in my life, I've never even filleted it. But the rules pretty much for every fish uh, are, are much as it's the same, unless it's a flat fish. Um, to drink with that, I'm going to have this Grayson Spiced Plum and Clementine Gin that I got from Aldi. So, tonic. It's a fever tree. It's got a mink reserve. I'm going to top this up so I'm not bleezing. Right. So, I've never cooked this tilapia before. That's going to fall out. Like I said, but the method of cooking the fish is is uh, something that's a bit of a favourite of mine. There we go. Cheers. Oh, it's fine that. And I'm going to serve it with galette potatoes. I think that's what they're called. I can't remember. So this is potatoes that I had mashed with my buttered leeks from the other day. Let them cool down, split them into two and just put them into fish cake sized pieces with my hands. Uh, scored them with a bit of uh, a knife or a, a skewer and they've got them, they're on cling film. I'm going to stick them in the fridge just to keep them set. So, that's the first thing you would do if you don't have any mashed potatoes. You can do whatever you like but I'd, I'd recommend mashing some and cooking some. So. Um, in an oven proof pan, if you can get one that's got a lid, even better, but if not, uh, now you could put whatever you like in the sauce, it's a version of sauce vierge, which is because it's got virgin olive oil or extra virgin olive oil, uh, but I've got a few spring onions and some vine cherry tomatoes, which I've washed and quartered, I've also going to put the stock of the vine in, which will give it that wee bit of a flavour, and the juice of two limes. Now this is the first thing you do before you would fillet any fish, unless of course you've bought the fish fillet. So, I'm just going to add this. Lime juice. You could do this with pretty much any white fish, I'm not so sure about oily fish like mackerel, salmon or trout, um, you'd, you wouldn't put a, an oily sauce with it, which this is an oily sauce. And certainly you could do it with the lime juice and a lot less oil, but we'll just stick with, with white fish with this. Okay. Uh, I've got some capers which I'm going to put in here as well. Now you don't have to put capers in, but I'm putting capers. Uh, as another accompaniment, I'm going to do sautéed courgette. So you wash a courgette, top and tail it, cut it into three sections. Come in close so you can see. Boom. Music. Music's good, died. This is nice and easy, you just cut along the length. I'll put that in here for later. Now you don't want to do this too far in advance. Because as with any fruit and or vegetable, they start losing their flavour. Right, I'll get tidied up and then I'll show you how to do the fish. Slurp. Slurp. Right, so this is my tilapia. So, most all fish really, you should give it a quick wash and give it a dry with a clean tea towel. Uh, so this has been previously frozen, but if it was fresh fish, when you want a fresh fish, what you've got to look for is nice bright eyes. Uh, they shouldn't be sunken in like this, but that's only because it's been frozen. 
and when you look at the gills they should be bright like that yeah, so this has been gutted uh, I'd be pretty fucking gutted if I was dead as well right so I'm gonna get rid of this cloth ideally you'd use another chopping board if you can oh, that's the opener. right so in a pair of kitchen shears and you want to cut off fins doesn't matter about the Danes, the Norwegians and the Swedes, but you want to get rid of the fins because they're a crazy bunch. <laughs> it's not important to do this, but it just makes the job a little bit easier. Uh, especially when they're spiny like this, you could really stab into your finger. okay through there yeah. right so and then cut from the back don't cut all the way down to the meat but cut the spines okay we can come back once I'm ready for the next bit right once you've got the, the fins and the, the spines off you don't have to worry about the tail you uh, need to get yourself a sharp knife, preferably flexible, but I don't have my flexible knife. So, to take the first fillet off, you want to cut round the head and right in to the meat, like that. Now, if you want, you could cut the head off, there's no point. So, the first stage you need to do is so you need to Stroke the fish. You stroke the fish. So the, the spines run down the backbone. So you want to insert your knife, come in about just where that cut is. And just cut along there. Along the backbone like that. Keeping your knife as close to the spine as possible. And then you just lift it up. cutting right along the spine through the tail that's it it's really not that difficult to, to fill out a fish that's one side and have a quick wash the other side's slightly more awkward because it's facing towards you. So, again, knife in against the spine bone, up to the head, round the gill and round the fin, like that, and you just do what you did, but in reverse, keeping it as close to the spine bones as possible. Flatfish actually is a lot easier to fillet. It's just you get four fillets on a flatfish because of the way it's done. So you just keep that against the spine in the rib cage. Now, a fresh fish or freshly frozen fish like this shouldn't have a fishy smell, it should have a sweet smell. Uh, if you're smelling anything fishy while you're doing this, uh, either check the fish or check your girlfriend. Hey! She might have bacterial vaginosis. And then you just want to trim this up where the, the spines were. Now, there's not actually a lot of eating in that, so it's fine. And you just want to trim the fish. Now, keep all that, you could make fish stock. I'm not going to show you how to skin it because I'm going to keep the skin on. But you just want to trim it along these spines. And then run your finger 
from head to tail make sure there's no bones there's a wee bone in there you cut that out there now, the way I'm going to present this actually I'm going to split it in two lengthways so if there were any pin bones down here you could quite simply just see there's a pin bone there cut that out Same on this side, just check, yeah there's some bones in there. So. Push the home button. Yeah. Oh, and we'll come back once that phone call's been answered. Right, I thought that phone call was from my number one fan, but I forget, I don't have any fans. It was actually the Chinese Minister for Health, but it turns out he got a Wong number. <laughs> anyway, right. So your fish, you want to season it. Flesh side only. Salt and pepper. Now you can cut this smaller if you want, but I'm not going to. Now before you put the fish in, you want to add your olive oil. So this is your sauce, so a good bit of oil, I reckon about, oh, about 75 mils maybe, maybe as much as that, and then you just delicately place the fish on top of those tomatoes. Now you could do this an hour in advance, or a couple of hours in advance. And your next stage is to get a cartouche, which is a bit of uh, grease proof, over your pan. Tin foil, foil side in, because it reflects the heat back into the pan. Okay. And just get this nice and tight around the pan. We'll be ready for the next stage. I'm away to play my bagpipes. Uh, I'm away to be joining in with hundreds if not thousands of pipers around the world. We're away to play a tune written by Martin Gillespie in honour of our NHS heroes. So you could put that in the fridge and that'll be ready for another time. You could do it hours in advance. But yeah, it's as simple as that. I'm going to tidy up, going to get my pipes out, going to play a few tunes and then I'll come back. But through the magic of wonderful editing skills by moi and my camera crew, uh, it'll just be instantaneous. So, see you in about 45 minutes. Right, so after you've gone outside and played your bagpipes to play for a charity single, and you come back in. So oven has been preheated to 180, and you just put your pan in there. It's approximately 20 minutes. Now, if you've taken it straight out the fridge, and obviously you put it in a little bit longer, it really doesn't matter that much if you overcook it, because um, it's going to be steamed anyway, kind of moist and steamed in the, in the sauce. So, once that's in, you need to get your, your tatties out of the oven and your courgettes so I've got two pans on uh, and just bring them up to temperature so you want to cook the tatties in a relatively high heat so they get a bit of colour and the courgettes in a medium-ish kind of heat so we'll come back once we're ready for that so then about 10 minutes before you take your fast shoot the oven <coughs> yep, should be starting to cook so I'll use olive oil because it's handy, but really you just want regular veg oil. Not too much. And you'll put a little bit of butter in just once you start to get a bit of colour. So the part inside face down. Okay. 
and season it if you want, but your tatties would be seasoned when you cook them. If you've got quite a lot of butter in there, they might break up, so what you want to do there is, before they cool down, is break in an egg yolk. Give it a good whip before you put it in the fridge and then shape it. So I'm going to put in just a small amount of butter, just to give them a bit of colour. Don't shake the pan or anything like that. Let them get a crust on them. So in your other pan, you do want olive oil. It's not going to be too hot because it's going to flavour them. And also you want a relatively large amount of butter. Give it a melt. One clove of garlic, chopped pretty big. Salt in straight away. help prevent it burning and then your courgette give them a shake more salt some pepper don't want them too high heat but you want them to have reasonable space between them if you want to zoom in So, that's lovely. Yes, that's the garlic. So if you want to put them all in the back. Like the local slag, they're the uh, happiest when they're on their backs. That's very sexist. Well, it's, yes. Anyway, you put a cartouche over the top of them and just let them steam. And once your tatties have been in a wee while, Give the pan a shake, make sure it's not stuck. In my case, they're stuck. So, fish slice. Or if you've got a palette knife. And that's that. So they will break up, because I have got quite a lot of butter in there. But it doesn't matter. I'm not that bothered. And your pan, your pan, your, your plate, you had them on, it's covered, if you cover that with cling film, the words mixed up, it means they won't stick the same. But keep that to the side. So just keep an eye on these veg, make sure they're not burning. I like the colour of the, the brown side, uh, the green side, until it goes kind of brown. I just give it a, a gentle shake from time to time. If you think it's burning, you could pour in a small amount of water. Uh, you could put it in white wine if you want. The problem there is, with wine being acidic, uh, acid turns green vegetables into a mushy brown colour. So You don't want to overcook your courgettes, you want a nice bit of crunch. So, let's check on these. No, not much colour, so cook them for three to five minutes on one side until you're happy with the colour and then delicately flip them over and they'll come back once. I'm ready to do that. Right. Once your courgettes have taken a bit of colour, so on one side, you must flip over. Doesn't matter if you don't get colour in on the, the inside flesh part. So at this stage, We'll see the garlic starting to get a bit of a nuttiness. So I'm putting a small amount of water, cartouche back on top, and heat off. And at this stage, I shall flip over my potatoes, which it's been absolutely pointless putting a bit of a pattern on them, but that's okay. I'll do that. They're ready. They won't take long. You want a nice crust on them. Uh, your fish shouldn't be long. But a couple of minutes before you take the fish out of the oven, put your plates in just to warm them up. Okay. Yeah, I'll come back once I'll be fishing up. Ooh. Right. Taking the fish out of the oven. 
put a cloth over the handle so in case anybody else comes in wants to touch it. I've checked it. I'll show you in a minute. So it'll plate up. Hmm. It's hot. I'm leaving this pan on because I'm waiting to do something else with it. Over there. If you want, if you're so inclined, you could put some chopped parsley or, or whatever you like over the, the courgettes. I don't have any parsley, so I won't be doing that. So. It's up to you how coloured you want your uh, courgettes to be. Again. It's up to you, garlicky. Put that back on there. Right. So I've already checked that because uh, thinking forward. There you go. If you want to take the skin off the fish, now's the time to do it. It should probably just peel off like this. Look. Well, I'm going to put the skin in there to crisp up because crispy fish skin is actually really nice. That's a good indication that the fish is cooked as well. That the skin comes off really easily like that. I'm not going to take, take it off on that side. Right. Okay, so you want a large fillet. Fill it over the top. This really is simple, simple stuff. But that's falling apart, but I don't care. So some people's lives. Sam Smith, for example, he's a uh, had a complete meltdown. Spunk trumpet it is. So the oil, the juices from the fish. And your lime juice in that combines to make a sauce. So it's not as greasy as you think, because remember, olive oil is pretty much a fruit juice. An oily fruit juice. And if you're so inclined. gelatine in the skin has meant that it's stuck to my fingers and I definitely won't be eating that. Walk away. Ten seconds old. Just crisp up that skin a little bit. The one that's on the floor will be mine. <laughs> right, there we go. Tilapia with sauce vierge. Projets and galette potatoes. I just feel like something slightly different. I made some bread dough yesterday. Kate can't have it because it was made with bread flour. I'm going to put a bit of garlic in there. Straight in the pan, apart from making an arse of it like I just did. See how that works. Anyway, that's just a wee aside. So, this was the main dish. So, happy, really crappy cooking.